should freebies be regulated and if so by whom or should governments be allowed to spend any amount on public welfare or subsidy that they deem fit as long as they can afford it who decides what is a freebie what is acceptable under the ages of uh, public welfare economic order social justice and what is not what is wasteful the debate around freebies is increasingly central to indian politics and the tempo is being built up ahead of the big elections in gujarat and himachal pradesh where political parties are looking to make the debate over revenues uh, a critical part of the election narrative joining us on the news track for this uh, debate we've got narendra taneja leader of the bharatiya janata party squaring off against him we've got supriya shrinet from the congress and we've got jasmine shah vice chairperson from the dialogue and development commission government of delhi uh, he's a member of the aam aadmi party i want to go across to narendra taneja first because we are seeing whether it is the trs government in telangana whether it is the dmk government in tamil nadu the aam aadmi party government in punjab and delhi congress governments elsewhere the opposition is getting together to push back against prime minister modi's ideas of revdi and fighting against this freebie culture why do you as a spokesperson of the bjp believe that this battle against freebies is so important in indian politics at this juncture and how exactly do you define what a freebie is and why is it problematic to you uh, good question you see uh, rahul india is a very fair state and we are a mixed economy i mean uh, it's nothing new for you know since independence you know government both at the center and various states we are spending billions on education and health and building infrastructure and also coming out with schemes to protect the vulnerable sections of our society that's our national duty and you know and that's of course if you look at our track record since we came to power in 2014 i'm talking of prime minister narendra modi government we have done the maximum for the vulnerable section of the society we have you know come up with revolutions like you know uh, lpg cylinder and uh, you know led bulbs and uh, healthcare health insurance and the list just goes on and on so we are all for taking care of the vulnerable society because we think there's our national duty no but let's take for example management. free but, electricity which uh, the prime minister yeah. and the bjp seem to think of as a revdi or a freebie yes, which is I'm, a key I'm, part I'm, of what a party like the aam aadmi party wants to promise I'm, where they believe I that think. giving 200 300 units of free electricity is very useful for poor families so who decides no. what is a freebie no, one this, person's freebie is somebody else's economic welfare it, it, no it, that's precisely the point the point is that you know when you when it comes to electricity good you mentioned it you see just looked at the overall how capital intensive it is uh, you know to to produce electricity right from you know sourcing fuel to making it available to the consumers we have done in electricity for instance the led led revolution and that we are saving crores every hour that's the way to do it instead of saying that using it as a kind of this thing all right you give me vote and this is what i'm going to give you for so completely ignoring the economics of it both at the national level and also at producing and one state like in uttar pradesh akhilesh yadav samajwadi party in the last the last election went even further he offered free petrol and cng and not completely ignoring the fact that we import bulk of our petrol uh, crude oil and natural gas completely so what the prime minister is referring to is revdi revdi means we use the when you offer something which against the welfare of the same people the economic prosperity of the same people you are targeting you are doing that ignoring the economic fundamentals ignoring their own welfare ignoring the fundamentals of economics and in a, in the process expecting that i'm giving something and return they will vote me so that kind of offering bribe if i may use the so okay. revdi so and jesh jasmin shah the charge against the aam aadmi party and arvind kejriwal is that you are trying to bribe voters that parties like yours by offering free electricity etc are giving these revdis because in a state like gujarat you have no real claim against the bjp by offering these freebies you are trying to bribe voters into voting for you and this is very dangerous because i have data from different states take punjab for example which is teetering on financial stress 53.3% is the current level of the debt to state gdp ratio 
So if you already have a 53% debt as a percentage of uh, gross state uh, domestic product, that's a very high level of financial stress a state like Punjab is on. Instead of cleaning up the finances, making states more financially viable, in a bid to expand your footprint, you are taking Indian politics on a dangerous path. Rahul, let's first ask the question, how did a state like Punjab, the most prosperous state uh, in the 80s, which had the highest per capita income nationally, today has become one of the bottom most states. How did the 3 lakh crore debt come? It was not because Aam Aadmi Party came to power. It was because Congress, BJP and Akadal, Akali Dal have jointly looted the state and given away money in all kinds of things and have caused corruption. Look at the state of UP, 6 lakh crores of debt. Look at the state uh, uh, of Gujarat, another 3 lakh crores of debt. Are these people giving any free schemes to the people? No. But still these states are in distress. On the other side, you look at Delhi. Delhi is today the only state, as the CAG report says, which is running a surplus budget for the but last Delhi five years. Delhi gets a lot of yes, central yes, financing, a lot of aid from the central government. So it's not really a full state. You can't compare no, a Delhi with a I, Gujarat. You can, you can, Rahul, because let's not forget, Delhi government gets no money out of the Finance Commission. And that's a case pending in the Supreme Court. We are only dependent on our own taxes. But that's not the point. The larger point, Rahul, allow me to make this, is today we are seeing two distinct economic philosophies, philosophies in this country today. And it's a welcome debate to have in the 75th year of our independence. On one side, BJP is giving tax waivers of 5 lakh crore to their corporate friends. They have done write-offs of loans worth 10 lakh crores, but they want to recover money by putting GST on Atta, Dal, Chini and all of that. And at the other side, they're saying we have no money to give to the poor. They are still not committing when will education become free and quality in the rest of the country? When will healthcare become free and quality in the rest of the country? All they want to do is squeeze the poor, give money to their rich friends, and, and ensure that parties like AAP, which are running an honest government, mind you, not a deficit government, but giving these basic utilities in our country in the 75th year of independence so that people of this country can live a life of dignity, they have a problem of that. And that is what the people of this country, the people of Gujarat, they are seeing it. Supriya Shrinath, politically, is the Congress getting edged out in this growing battle in Gujarat and elsewhere between AAP and the BJP? You've taken the side of the opposition saying that the government is anti aam Admi, which is why it's opposing this revedi culture, but you've also been a business journalist in the past. You worried about state and central finances and therefore in that capacity, is it not highly worrying the level of indebtedness in some of the Indian states? Punjab 53.3%, Rajasthan 39.5%, uh, Bihar 38.6%. This is the debt as a percentage of the state uh, gross domestic product. Kerala 37.0%, Uttar Pradesh 34.9%, West Bengal 34.4%, Jharkhand 33 and the list goes on. Our states are in acute financial stress. Rahul, I say this not just in capacity of being a Congress spokesperson but as a former journalist and I, I used to raise this issue even when I was at, on the high street of finance. The issue is when it comes about the poor, it is going to be called revdi. It will be called subsidies, it will be called loan waiver. But for the rich, the same subsidies are incentives. For the rich, aap revdi nahi asharfiya baat rahe hain. Aap ne ek lakh asi hazar karoor ka hit liya because of corporate tax cut. Aap ne che lakh karoor ka spectrum de lakh karoor mein bech diya. No, but one, one second, can I just pause you there to say, one, 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 one second, one second, one, one, one second, Supriya, Supriya, let's take this one by one. Let's assume corporate taxes come down, that is with the idea of encouraging India Inc. to invest more in the India story, which is why corporate taxes are being brought down to global levels uh, so that India becomes competitive globally. There is economic rationale and each rupee of that investment, whether it's domestic or international, has a high multiplier effect no, on the rest of like the economy. To to Just one second, Supriya Shrinath. So it's not a ravery, there is a multiplier logic to what is being attempted. It's been three financial years since the time this corporate tax rate was reduced. True. Give me one, just one incidence of the gross fixed capital formation, which is the only indicator of investments by India Inc. rising. 
It's at an all-time low. But there were two years of the pandemic. What you're saying is correct. Invest in India. Th that's true. Thirty thousand. No, one second. Wait, one second. The reality no, one is second. Let me that. Oh, one second. Let me finish. Let me finish. No, but this but but you're fair. making a political point. See, I'm trying to ensure that this is an economic this uh, conversation with some high, high high thinking and high level of the argument. The problem, Rahul, is you're not even letting me finish. But the but but, but ma'am, as you say, for three, I don't want you to make you're political. But you're making sentence. political points. With rhetorical flourish, I'm trying to bring you on data. Two of those years were years of the pandemic. In the middle of the pandemic, in the middle of all the lockdowns, you can't really expect India to start investing very aggressively. It's practically not possible. That is also the reality which followed soon after corporate taxes were brought down. Supriya, capacity utilization in Indian industry today is at 70 to 80 percent. Capacity utilization. The pandemic for all practical purposes of the economy is behind us. But what before the pandemic? What was happening before the pandemic? 35% GFCF is down to 27% and the government doesn't seem to be losing sleep. Please understand, when consumption and investment go down, there will be no job creation. We have broken the virtuous cycle of consumption, investment, jobs, further fueling consumption. Consumption is 80% of our GDP. How are we going to ensure consumption stays when there is acute joblessness, high prices, income going down? I am sorry, I am not rhetorical. I am stating economy 101 very simply. You have broken the virtuous cycle of consumption, investment and jobs. You do not want to incentivize people to consume more. You do not want to put the hand, money in the hands of the poor. They do not have excess income to uh, raise demand. There will obviously be low investment. The, the needle on investment did not move a single inch with the government's corporate tax cut. But that's not the point. The point here is India is a welfare state. 83% of our people have lost wages. There are 23 crore people pushed below the poverty line. Are you telling me the government can look any other way? And my problem is this whole debate is centered around fiscal implications the moment you talk about the poor. Because that is social justice. Okay. That is economic let, equality. Let Narendra is Taneja respond to this. The the uh, no, one second, Jasmine Shah. Let Narendra Taneja it. respond. And I also want to welcome to this broadcast Palani Well Thyagarajan, Minister of Finance of Tamil Nadu. He is a man who has managed big money, understands financing, now is in politics. So I'm going to spend some time with Mr. Thyagarajan, but I want to get a quick counter from Narendra Taneja on the economic and political argument that when there is uh, an incentive given to corporates, whether it is a production link incentive or reduction in corporate tax, that is hailed when something is given like free bijli or free pani to the poor by any state government, you attack that as a ravdi that yours is a government which is throw the rich and anti the poor and that charge is now being flung your way. Narendra Tanja, quick response before no. I go to Mr. Uh, uh, very quick. You see, I mean, look, facts and political slogans are from two different planets. Uh, political struggles don't even belong to the solar system, it belongs to some other universe. We don't know about it. But some people do that, they think it will help them politically on the ground. It does, because you have to bring facts. People are experiencing what the government has done 2014. You can go to people's heart, you can go to their life, their economic life, they can see, they feel, that's why they like us. Precisely. You see, the point is what the Prime Minister was referring to was very simple that don't do anything, don't come up with something which is financially and economically not sustainable, number one. Number two, also harmful to the economy. Economy of the very same people you are targeting. That's what he was referring to. Now the point here is the important. Let me give you an example of Delhi. I heard the um, Army spokesperson carefully. Look at Delhi, for instance. They want to give free bijli, but why don't they use money? Why don't they use the same money to boost production? To invest more in uh, a, you know, uh, producing more electricity in power plants, in solar, in wind fires, and so and so forth, wherever in the country. Okay. And then bring that money or bring that capital like for the benefit of the people. Stay with me. I'll come back to you in a moment. I want to go across to PTR. Mr. Tyagarajan is a man who, in his private capacity, in his initial capacity as a private uh, investor, spent a lot of time looking at financing and also probably complaining about what was wrong with the way. Politicians used to run finances and now finds himself having to manage public finances as the finance minister of Tamil Nadu. 
data suggests, and I'm not just talking about Tamil Nadu, I'm talking about the country per se, that state after state, in a very acute level of financial distress, states like Punjab, Rajasthan, Bihar, Kerala, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, where the debt to state uh, domestic product uh, ratio is in the early 50s, late 30s. This is deeply problematic and in the midst of all of that, India finds itself, Indian politics finds itself in a raging debate about freebies. What is a freebie? Who defines what is a freebie? Who regulates? Should freebies be regulated? And if so, who should regulate those freebies? Mr. Tyagaraj, welcome. Thank you. Uh, actually, if you don't mind, I'll step back a bit. This debate has already occurred once when the 15 Finance Commission's terms of reference were put out. Those terms of reference included a line that said that there should be a discouragement of populist measures. And when it was discussed, the implication was that whatever is called freebies was populist measures. And at the time, you know, finance minister after finance minister, delegation after delegation, spoke to eminent economists like Dr. Anup Singh, who was on the panel, uh, and other bureaucrats like Dr. Shaktikant Das, or Mr. Shaktikant Das, who is now the RDA governor, and uh, N.K. Singh, uh, my, my friend uh, Mr. N.K. Singh. And uh, we, we asked the same question. We said, you know, how do you define what is a good freebie, what is a bad freebie? I'll send you a clip later if you want. I have gone through an extensive analysis of schemes that were given for free, all the way from something like free food in schools and free laptops to students, all the way to what I consider the most extreme kind of waste of money in, a, in the name of a freebie, which is 25,000 rupees per woman, which is 50% discount on buying two wheelers. So, of course, there's a, there's a wide range of programs. And then there's nuanced ways to look at it. Is it accretive? Is it an investment in human capital? Is it a risk mitigator? Is it something that will not stoke inflation? So there are many nuances to it. What I'm surprised about at this point is just two things. One, on what basis is the Supreme Court the arbiter of how the money is spent? There's no place in the Constitution, not only in our Constitution, in almost any democratic Constitution. There's no place where the Supreme Court gets to decide or any court gets to decide how the people's money gets spent. That is the exclusive domain of the legislature of elected people whether that is Congress in the United States in the presidential system or the parliament in the UK or the legislatures in the states. So my first question is, why is the Supreme Court in this debate? The second question I have is, if this is such a bad thing, why was the Honorable Prime Minister, the man who flew down from Delhi to Chennai to inaugurate the 25,000 rupee per scooter scheme for the ADMK government, in my opinion, the simple worst freebie that existed in the entire history of Tamil Nadu. It was pollution inducing, anti-public transport, lot of fraud. It was in every way a bad scheme. Why did the Prime Minister come to inaugurate that if he is so much against the freebie culture? These are only two questions no, I ask. But you. you also come from a state where political parties have promised uh, free saris, free mixers, <laughs> free grinders, uh, free televisions as part of the election manifesto and if you're saying why is the Supreme Court involved, can I turn around and ask you this question PTR, who then should decide, can Netas be trusted to decide uh, what is a good freebie, what's not because their primary concern often times when they're trying to spread in new states is to win elections and therefore if at this moment Kejriwal wants to win the hearts and minds of the people of Gujarat he will be willing to say whatever ultimately once you come to power then you have to deal with the consequences but in the build up a need not just Kejival, any neta in opposition can make any promise so if you you are having a problem with the supreme court determining but then who decides should this be regulated at all can netas be trusted because if they are to be trusted if some of these indian states like punjab like andhra pradesh were independent republics like sri lanka they'd be in a very bad and dangerous situation Okay, can I answer now? Or yes, you please. were expounding something for so long, I lost the plot. But my point is, that's what a democracy says the people should decide. In a democracy, the people's vote is supreme. Those they elect get to answer to the people what they have done. If you say that Tamil Nadu is a state that has done a lot of freebies, I say two things. Tamil Nadu, of all the states in India, if you combine per capita GSDP plus human development plus social development plus gross enrollment ratio plus doctors per thousand people, we are the number one state in the country. What is wrong with my performance that you tell me you know better than me how to run the state? I say that my fiscal deficit is 3.5% well below the borrowing limit 
and the unions are at 7%. I say my per capita income is more than double the national average. I say that my uh, inflation is lower than the national average by 2.5%. Why do you assume that somebody can tell me how to do my job better? Do the people will decide whether I'm doing a good job or not? Who is this other party required? If the netas cannot be trusted, what is the notion of democracy? Which neta can be trusted? There is no, no, no categorization of netas. Good neta, bad neta. That's what the people get to decide in an election. What more do we need? Okay, that's an important and strong counter. Instead of getting into an argument with you myself, I'll get the BJP spokesperson to respond. But I have another question for you before we conclude. Which is, where does this debate go from here? It's become bigger now than at any time in Indian politics because there's a pushback against the Ravidi culture from none less than the Prime Minister, which has never happened. This whole idea that the poor must be given because the Prime Ministers and the BJP is trying to make the point that if there is something which leads to empowerment, you build something, it has a multiplier. Those are the kind of welfare schemes we should be investing in rather than just subsidies which take care of your immediate requirement but don't build any capacity whether it is physical capacity or technical capacity or intellectual capacity or ability to work in the future that's the differentiation the prime minister is trying to draw which is crucial for the government and for indian politics at this juncture well first of all i apologize i only gave a time from 7 to 7 30 i have another thing to go to so i'm going to drop off i didn't expect to go on a debate i was supposed to be interviewed by akshay not then the game was switched on me, I agreed to come on. I'm just going to make the point. Yes. Either you must have a constitutional basis to say what you're saying, in which case we all listen. Or you must have some special expertise. You must be a double PhD in economics. You must have some Nobel Prize. You must have something that tells us that you know better than us. Or you must have a performance track record that shows that you have grown the economy wonderfully, that you have brought down the debt, that you've increased the per capita income, that you've created jobs. Then we say, oh, we listen. When neither of these is true, why should we listen to somebody's view? What makes that the gold standard? What makes that the word of God? I'm a believer. I believe in God. I don't believe that any man is God. Why should I take somebody's perspective? The election gave me the right to do what I'm supposed to do. My chief minister gave me a job to do. I'm doing it well. I'm outperforming the union government by a lot. I guarantee I'll continue to do that for the next three years. We are huge net contributors to the uh, union exchequer. Huge. One rupee goes from us, we hardly get 35, 33 paisa back. What more is it you want me to do? Why should I listen? On what basis? Do you have a constitutional basis? No. Are you a financial expert? No. Do you have a Nobel Prize? No. Have you performed better than us? No. On what basis should I change my policy for you? Is this some like extra constitutional diktat that's coming from heaven? What are you talking about? Okay, you would have a very spirited defense of the manner in which uh, Tamil Nadu is being run at this moment and also the way opposition parties see this. I didn't want to drag you into a debate, so I'm going to thank you for the time being. But we will build on all of what Palani Well Tyagarajan said and he said multiple things. So Narendra Taneja, your party has won no PhD yeah. uh, or has no uh, Nobel Prize in economics. You don't have double PhDs. Why should you determine what other state governments can do? Why should they listen wow. to you? Well, uh, during Margaret Thatcher's time, the UK economy did very well. During Reagan's time, America's economy did wonders. Neither of these leaders, you know, had Nobel Prize. I, Mr. Chagraj, and I, I, I listened to him. I, I listened to him earlier. I mean, he, he has, he has, you know, he comes with a good background. But this is kind of a. This shows, I think, unnecessarily intellectual arrogance. If you are a PhD or if you study in the U.S., that doesn't really make you. No, no. Kind of, Where you know, is the intellectual arrogance from his perspective? Here. He's asking you, how can the yeah. BJP determine what is the gold standard of what is acceptable as a freebie and what's not? You do what you no, want to do. Answer. I will do what I let, want let to do, me. and the people of Tamil Nadu will decide whether I've done a good job or not. Argues the finance minister. You see, democracy means that he is entitled to his views. Am I saying you are not entitled to your views? And we are entitled to our views. Why he thinks that his views should never be countered, should never be debated? Are we a dictatorship? No, he's saying, why have you gone to the Supreme Court? He says, why, if we have won a democratic mandate, why has the BJP gone to the Supreme Court? Why do they want you, why do you want the Supreme Court to play judge and jury on this? It's a democratic exercise between Netas and the people. No, point is that, you know, don't Netas go to the Supreme Court? Don't state go to the Supreme Court? 
Supreme Court is also part a pillar of the democracy, one of the more, one of the four pillars. Tomorrow you go to say, why do you go to the press? Why are you going to the press? Why are you talking with Rahul on this issue? If people have elected us, we will do whatever you want. You question Supreme Court, tomorrow you're going to press the press. Tomorrow you're going to press the think tank. Then you're going to uh, cross, you know, yes, uh, question even the people of other states. You say this is nothing. Point. Look, the point here is that, point here, <laughs> I hear Rahul has asked me question, please, let me finish. Point here is that, first of all, very important point, Rahul. Prime Minister said oh, no, everybody, there is a huge difference. There is a huge difference between Ravadi and previous. Rahul, By Ravadi, you know, Ravadi, very clear. When you when you really go about the thing with complete disregard for your economy, complete disregard for the economic fundamentals and principles, complete regards even, you know, for democracy in the way that I'll give you free petrol, free CNG, free, free commodity. In Delhi, our simple question, Rahul, in Delhi, multi-millionaires are getting subsidy on electricity. No bill. Can I please? Okay, yeah. so you made that what several arguments, coming? both Jasmine and Supriya itching to come in. I'll go to Supriya first. Quick counter to what you're hearing from the BJP, because someone needs to set the standard. Now, it's arguable who that right person is and whether the court should get involved or not. But otherwise, it's a very slippery slope. Opposition leaders will continue to make all kinds of demands, regardless of how it impacts precarious state financing. Supriya. You know, there are two things that I want to say, and I think those two things need to be said in no uncertain terms. I think what the Tamil Nadu finance minister said is very important. He is not questioning your right to raise an issue. He is questioning your track record to raise it. What is your track record? Your track record is that India is battling with high prices. India is battling with unemployment. India is battling with an economy that is completely ruined. India is battling with an economy where MSMEs are shutting down by the day. India is battling with creation of monopolies. And I think that's the point that he's trying to make. And I second that point, that your track record has to be better than that to start preaching. The other thing that I want to say is, for an average taxpayer of this country, I believe everybody pays taxes because indirect taxes are levied on every single individual of this country. But for the direct taxpayers, Rahul, people like you and me are paying 30% taxes. Actually, a little more with surcharges and all of that. Why should corporates be made to pay only between 15 to 22%? With what right has that been reduced? And just to set the record straight, because you intervened when I was earlier talking, corporate tax cut, ha corporate tax collection has actually fallen from five lakh fifty-six thousand crore to four lakh fifty-seven thousand crore. And you are telling me that this was a great move? Absolutely not. We are being burdened with high taxes. The poor are being made to pay more by increasing GST on essential food items. Rupee ka daam, dood ka daam, do rupee liter bada gya hai. Uske baare mein baat nahi karenge. But they will come here and preach on ravedis. Asharfiya baat rahe hai aap. Ravedi nahi baat rahe hai. Ravedi garib ko deni zaruri hai. Or ek antra baat zaruri hai. No, no, but let's take for example. One second, one second. Otherwise you'll have, you'll have said too many things. I come, I come back to you in a moment. One second. I come back to you in a moment. But let's take for example. Just one second, Rahul. Please let me take a 10 second point. Okay, 20 second. Okay, 20 second. Okay. Rahul, 10 second point. Go on. Please allow me to make this. 10 seconds. When the Prime Minister of this country gets up and says, free, 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 free my ration, free my vaccine, what is that? Why did you put your hands on your hands on your hands in the election? This is your work to do. If you come to the Vishwa Me Mahamari, you must give people ration. You must provide for vaccination. 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 This is a story. सांसद खड़ों के कहते हैं फ्री फंड का खाना खा रहे गरीब आपके घर से आ रहा है ये खाना ओके जैस्मीन शाह आई वाज इन गुजरात रिसेंटली एंड व्हेन यू स्पीक टू वोटर्स देयर अबाउट द आप कैंपेन इट्स लार्जली अबाउट फ्रीबीज ईच टाइम केजरीवाल गोस देयर ही अनाउंसेस अ न्यू फ्रीबी सो द सम एंड सब्सटेंस एंड द सेंट्रल पॉइंट ऑफ योर कैंपेन are the multiple freebies and that is what you are promising to the voters. So the BJP will say, surely this should not be the way of trying to win an election by promising freebies on Moss. There has to be some sense of responsibility. It will get you crowds. It will probably make you more popular than you were otherwise. But it will also be financially ruinous. Rahul, I am sorry if you are hearing what the BJP Netas are hearing because the people of Gujarat are hearing that here is a political party which is for the first time saying that we will fix your government schools, we will provide you high quality education free of charge till higher education, we will provide you high quality healthcare 
in the remotest of Gujarati villages, we will provide you high quality basic services. That is the message to the people of Gujarat. Some free welfare programs are part of that promise. But I would like to make a larger point, which is the BJP going to the Supreme Court, asking for a committee, shows that contempt for democracy. I fully stand by what the Tamil Nadu minister said, that today, if you are saying that people of India are not smart enough to know are these good policies or bad policies? Sorry, you have a contempt for democracy. This were the same arguments made when India became independent 75 years back. It was a largely illiterate nation. People around the world were saying, Ki ye log kaise chun How they don't even have a mind of their own. India stuck and became a strong democracy. You know, a few years back, women were not allowed to vote in many parts of the world. Many races were not allowed to vote. So this shows that contempt for the people of the country. If you are saying that you are wiser than the masses who have actually elected you, so what are you really saying? Get your idea and your and your uh, truth straight. Allow the people of the country to decide. Taneja, whether giving money to your I, rich if friends. If I get you to respond to what Jasmine and Supriya are saying, you know, they the opposition is essentially questioning, who are you to tell us what we can and cannot do? It's a pact between us and the voter. It's our responsibility to govern and deliver. And if we fail, we are out. You can't tell us okay. what's right and what's wrong. Let, let, let me answer it. Let me answer it. Let me, Mr. Chagran raised a very interesting point. I mean, he talks about his GDP. He's talking about the GDP of his state. He's talking about unemployment. He says we are among the best. Oh, we are probably the best man in the state in the country. Very good. Congratulations if, you, if that's what you are doing. But the point is when Hyundai comes to Tamil Nadu with billions of dollars of investment and made at Tamil Nadu a major hub, of his car for export to even to the developed country. Are they coming to Tamil Nadu or they are coming to attractive investment policies of the government? No, but he also asked why did the are Prime they, Minister go and because, why did listen, the Prime Minister listen, go and inaugurate a listen, scheme where the AIDMK government was giving free scooters? Very easy. Point is that you know going to inaugurate, if a leader goes to inaugurate or that's a totally different thing from launching a policy. We didn't launch the policy there. You have to be, if you are invited, you're polite, you go because you have, you have some relationship. Surely you think it's a good idea, otherwise you wouldn't show up. Point, 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 number two point, number two point. Today, today, you see, today if India, around, if India is today the <laughs> what hottest argument is this? In destination, hottest investment destination is thanks to our policies, not the policies of Tamil Nadu. The business is Tamil and what we acknowledge. Now the point is, you know, I mean, my friend it's from the Amadi party says, the Prime Minister says, uh, Mufat, 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 the Prime Minister never says that. When did the Prime Minister say that? Point of, when did you see the Prime Minister saying, Hamne LPG, LPG is a revolution, the entire world is admiring. And uh, admiring. No, no, let's have a civil, civil, civilized debate. Uh, I appreciate. No, no. I don't get okay. it. No, I can't allow this to degenerate. No plus, no plus I'm also man. running out of time. I'm running out of so, time. Please have a civilized debate. Have a civilized debate. Now, my last point is the point is that you know the, what the prime minister talked about bravery is a very important thing for the overall economic health of this country and for these states also, which are run by other political parties, including Congress, DMK, Amadha Party. Don't play with the economic fundamentals, economic principles, and don't try to exploit the economic ignorance of the ordinary person. What they are trying to do is exploit Rahul, the can economic I come in ignorance for a of okay. the Okay, I'm out of time. Take them for a ride. Don't do that. Okay, I'm going to give both uh, Supriya and Very Jasmine quick. 10 seconds each. Yeah. Starting with Supriya, I'm completely out of time, so you need to wrap up quickly, Supriya. Almost close to 9% fiscal deficit, growth rates plummeting, unemployment high. 156 lakh crore worth of debt. You believe we are on sound economic fundamentals. Your finance minister says, Mahengai hai nahi. The RBI governor on the same day says, we are grappling with uncontrolled inflation. That is the reality, sir. Okay, Jasmine Shah. Smell the coffee, sir. Every single, every single BJP state is today running a, a deficit budget. 30,000 crore is the deficit in Gujarat, 60,000 crores is the deficit in UP. The government of India's deficit has increased from 50 lakh to 140 lakh crore. Everywhere they are looting the country, giving money to the rich friends, and today they sit here and preach about how to not give benefits to the poor if you're still running a good uh, government and a good budget. Okay, I'm looking at the DMK manifesto for the 2021 assembly elections in Tamil Nadu. Amongst their various promises are 25,000 rupees to 1 lakh people to grow, go on a pilgrimage. I don't know how, I mean that's productive from a religious perspective, but how is that productive economically? Uh, point number one. 
uh, the AI DMK manifesto talking about washing machines, cable TV connections to those who have the government owned RSU cables. How is washing machine and cable TV connections economically productive? Remember, this is a, I, I find this to be a fascinating debate because someone needs to bell the cat and someone needs to actually muster the courage to say that we need to have a frank conversation about what is acceptable and what is not. Who determines what is acceptable and what's not is a completely different matter. But this slippery slope where all manner of promises, including washing machines, cable TVs and what have you, are made in the hope of getting votes. This is dangerous, it's fiscally ruinous. We don't want to end up like Sri Lanka. So this is an important debate. I'm glad we were able to put some might behind it, get sharp voices across the political divide. But it's also a debate which is politically very sensitive because the BJP runs the risk of the opposition turning around as it is and saying that you are friends of uh, the rich, you don't care about the poor. So that's something that needs to be countered by the government politically. But this is an important debate. We will keep tracking what happens in the court and in the political battlefield. Uh, for the time being, uh, Mr. Tyagarajan, uh, Supriya Shrinath, Jasmine Shah and Narendra Taneja for joining me on the news track and for lighting up this debate with the power of your insights and arguments. Thank you. I leave it to you to determine whether Netas can be trusted. Should we really uh, get someone to regulate? Who can be a regulator? Can the Supreme Court really decide? That's very problematic. Can the courts decide what governments can and cannot do? Because Netas may be responsible. Does that mean you allow the judiciary to decide? Doesn't really. right? So what happens next? We'll track all of that.